Hello and welcome to the 3 by the Sea Designs YouTube channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. My name is Kim and this is a knitting podcast where I talk all about 3 by the Sea Designs, which is a shop that I have with my mom, Dreema, and my sister, Becky. It's an Etsy shop and we sell handmade items like project bags, stitch markers, hand dyed yarn for knitters and crocheters. So I talk about shop things and I talk about uh, things that I'm working on. If I finish anything or have works in progress, I always share them here. So welcome, thanks for joining me. Today is Friday, August 9th. It is about 9.30 in the morning and I'm hoping I will be able to get this episode up today, if not tomorrow morning. So it's episode 40, uh, 48. So it's kind of exciting that I'm coming up on episode 50. It's been a couple of years since I've been doing this uh, podcast and I absolutely love hanging out with you guys and connecting with you. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I've got my coffee this morning in this really cute mug. So like I was saying, we have an Etsy shop. You can find us there on Etsy. We are on Instagram, Facebook. We have an email address. All of the ways that you can contact me or any of us are down below in the description box. There's links to everything. And if you um, have a question, you can just leave a comment and let me know. We are most, we are definitely most active, I would say, on Instagram. I've been a little quiet on there lately, only because we've been so busy trying to get ready for our fall collection, and it's just summertime. Things have been kind of busy around here. So, but those are the ways that you can contact us, and anything I talk about today will be linked down below. I do have a little bit of shop news for you guys. I'm going to announce the next, the theme for the next mystery yarn set. So I've been teasing it a little bit for a few weeks now about that it's going to be a Halloween theme. And I'm gonna put a picture up of it here of the inspiration picture. And it's going to be a Hocus Pocus yarn mystery set. So we just love the colors that we came up with for this inspiration picture. And um, we think that they will all blend together nicely, these colors. Uh, I know so many of you love that movie and I know I love it as well. So I'm really excited about this mystery set. So the way it will work is you'll have the option of the yarn only where you'll get a 100 gram skein of our Sanibel base, which is our 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. That's our fingering weight sock base, basically. You'll get a 100 gram skein and a coordinating 20 gram mini. Or if you want to add on the needle stoppers, we found some really cute um, Hocus Pocus themed needle stoppers. So that is an optional add on for you. So this will go up for pre-order on August 17th, which is next Saturday. And, um, and then it will ship out mid to a little bit later, September. And uh, so you'll have it right in time for all of your October making. So we are so excited to bring this. I've been wanting to do a Hocus Pocus theme for a while. And I hope you are all excited about it. Even if you don't necessarily like that movie, if these colors speak to you, then um, I definitely think you would enjoy this mystery set. The other thing I wanted to tell, remind you about is that the next shop update will be on Saturday, August 31st. It, um, our shop updates are always at noon Eastern time in our Etsy shop. And this is our fall collection. So we will have new project bags, new yarn, new notions, all in a fall or Halloween type of theme. And um, this is one of our four major collections or updates for the year. So we're really excited to bring that to you. Uh, we've been working a lot behind the scenes trying to get all of everything ready for the update. 
So that's probably why we've been a little bit quiet on social media lately, just trying to get all of our ducks in a row for that. So next, um, not next week, but in about, I think two weeks, I will do, well, the week before the update, I will do a preview video for the collection and show off all of the things that we will have in the shop. So you guys get to do a little bit of window shopping and prepping and planning for the things that you would like to get from the new collection. All right, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and move on to my projects. I actually don't have any finished objects this time. Um, I have a couple of half finished objects with socks because like I've finished one of the socks and I'm working on the second one, but um, I don't have anything finished this time, which is totally fine. I did start a new project and I've made some progress on quite a bit of things. So I'm looking forward to showing you all my progress on my, um, on my projects. I'll start with my oldest project, which I didn't show this last time um, because I hadn't made much progress on it. So if there's ever a time when I don't show it, it's only because I didn't, I don't have much to show. <laughs> so, um, but it's in my Mrs. Claus's kitchen project bag that we had in the shop last year. And it, this is my go-go throw by Ambo O'Brien. I'm using my Arkansas Yarn Company um, advent calendar from last Christmas, so 2023, and the theme was um, the theme was Christmas Vacation, the movie. This is her Yummy Sparkle Base. It's a 751510 Superwash Merino Nylon and Stellina base. And it came with 24 minis and then the full skein for day 25 from the advent. So here's where I'm at. Let me scoot back. Last time I showed this, I was here where this progress keeper is. So I had just started the yellow. So I finished that one and then I've added two more colors and then I'm on this new color here with these sort of aqua. This is called a throw. Um, it could be a wrap. I definitely feel like it's going to be throw size. You can tell just from here, once it's stretched out and blocked and everything, it's definitely like a small throw size, I would say. I do love working on this. It's just that each color takes such a long time. So it's definitely a long-term project and I'm totally fine with that. I've talked about this on the podcast in recent episodes that this has been a huge um, lesson for me, this project in a lesson in patience and not being such a product knitter, but really enjoying the process of each section. So you're just repeating each section for each color until you get to the end, which I will end up having 24 stripes because I had 24 minis. And then in between each color is your, what they call, I guess, main color, which is this gray. This was my main color on day 25. So I'm really loving it. I think I'll show it again next when I have 18 colors mixed in because I have almost 12 now so I'm almost halfway through and then I'll show it again I think when I have um, 18 colors when, so when I'm three-fourths of the way done I do definitely recommend the pattern it's easy to follow um, I feel like for an advent project this uh, 
if you're wanting to do an advent project during December, this is not the pattern to use uh, if you're trying to keep up with it daily because it's almost impossible unless you spent the whole day knitting <laughs> to do one color a day. But if you're looking for a long-term project that you could use for your um, advent calendar or if you just have minis that you want to use, then this would be a good project. A lot of people like to use their advent calendar daily during December and work on a project, which again, this would probably, I probably wouldn't recommend this for that. But it's beautiful and I love it. And I'm loving how the colors are turning out. I have some progress on my Muscleboro hat. Uh, I had, last time I showed it, I had paused working on it because I was trying to decide if I wanted to make the other half of the hat in a different color. And I asked for everyone's opinions on, you know, your advice on what you thought would, would look best. And everyone, I think all of you <laughs> said that um, you would switch to black for the second half of the hat. Um, so just for some con context, I'm making the Muscleboro hat in a self-striping colorway. And I was gonna just continue with the hat for the whole, the, the whole length of the project. I was just gonna continue with this yarn for the whole length of the project. But then um, someone suggested that I make the second half of the hat in um, a different color. So that way you could wear it either way. You could wear it with the black on the top and the um, stripes around the band, or you could flip it the other way and wear the black. And then, so the black would be at the top and then you'd have a striped um, brim. So I decided to do that. So um, I ordered some yarn from Knit Picks. I don't know if this will show up because it's so dark. But let me tell you what it is. It's just black. Uh, let's see. Do I have the band in here is the question. I thought I did. Yes. I've actually never used Knit Picks yarn before. Um, so it's Knit Picks Stroll. It's their fingering weight, 75 fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. Um, it doesn't have a color name, but it's, oh, it, it is, it's black. So this is a 50 gram ball. It's 231 yards. I would say that's pretty equivalent to, <laughs> does not want to focus. It's pretty equivalent to our fingering weight as far as, um, as far as the yardage goes, but I wanted to compare it. This is the main color that I'm using uh, for the self striping and it's called Hello Darkness, My Old Friend. Um, so this is 105 grams and it's 400 yards. So it's definitely a little bit plumper than the black. The black has more yardage, slightly, a little bit more yardage. Um, but I think that'll be okay. I don't think it'll I don't think it'll matter at all. So as you can see, I stopped the self striping and this is where I marked where I started the black. I only had to go, I didn't move my marker, but I I only had to go another like half an inch or so with this and then I started the black. And so now I'm just definitely this has to be worked on in good lighting during the day. I can't really work on this at night, which 
I don't really knit a lot during the day except on the weekend. Um, so <laughs> this might take me a little while, but I wanted to give this to Gary for his birthday, which is in September. So I have about a little over a month um, before his birthday. So I definitely can finish this in that time. So I'm happy that I changed to the black. I definitely think um, that was a great suggestion from you guys. I really appreciate your opinions and feedback on that. And I think it'll be nice for him to have. I know he's, he already knows about it. He's really excited <laughs> about it because this is colors that he likes for um, one of the hockey teams that he likes. I have also made some progress on my birds of a feather shawl. It's in my um, summary bag, my VW summary bag. And this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's been out forever and I feel like so many people have made this pattern. It's really, it seems like it's really popular. There's a lot of projects on this pattern. So this uses um, fingering weight yarn and either mohair or surrey, which is what I'm using, surrey. And I'm also using this as the main color. This is coral, no, this is not coral. This is sea fan, which is a corally pink, pinky orange color. I would say it's more pink than orange looks kind of orange on camera. And then this is Pink Lemonade Party. So I'm using those two together. And here's where I'm at. I've made quite a bit of progress. So I was here last time where that progress keeper is. And you basically just alternate between the mohair or the surrey and your main color. And you're making stripes. And then every so often there's this really fun lace section. It's so pretty, I love it. I'm at the point now where I've stopped increasing and I'm, um, so I'm at the, I guess, the full amount of stitches. And so now you just knit the rest of it at the same stitch count. And except for these lace sections, it's extremely mindless because it's a lot of garter and I absolutely love that because I can work on it almost any time, except for that lace section, I have to pay attention. But other than that, I don't really, I've memorized it. I don't really have to pay attention to it too much. So I'm very happy with the progress that I'm making on this. It's really soft with the Surrey. I feel like you can interchange Surrey and mohair pretty easily. They're about the same as far as gauge goes. The Surrey might be a slightly thicker, uh, but they're both technically lace weights, mohair and Surrey. So I'm really enjoying this pattern as well. I've been wanting to make this one for quite a while. I don't think I said, but both of these yarns that I'm using for this project are from Three by the Sea. The other three projects are socks. Two of them you have seen already, and one of them is new. Let me start by showing you the um, socks, the shark socks that I have started. This is a bag from Delightful Works. It's a cute little sock size shark bag. 
And I have finished one of the socks and I'm working on the second one. Here is one of them completed. The yarn that I'm using is from Twin Mommy Creations. And the colorway name is You're Gonna Need a Bigger Boat. Uh, it's an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon. The weight says 113 grams. And there's 435 yards. So it's definitely more of a plump fingering weight yarn. Um, and I feel like based on the, the finished sock, I feel like it, it feels almost more like a sport weight, but it's not, it, I don't know. It's very squishy. I am using a US 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle. I love the yarn, it's so cute. And I just did a little simple texture pattern on the front. I'll put down below in the description box what I did, but I basically just did like a knit three pearl one type of texture on the front. But I'll, like I said, I'll put down below what I, what I did. This is a little stitch marker that we have in the shop. We only have a couple of these left if you like that one go grab it because there's not that many of them and so i'm on the second sock and i'm on the foot actually i'm through the heel already and just working on the foot i only have about 10 or 20 rounds to go i think on the foot this little progress keeper is also from twin mommy creations the same person who dyes this this yarn I'll link her shop below. I got this from her, gosh, two or three years ago. It's a shark holding yarn, it's so cute. This sock project is in a bag from Mountain State Stitches. <laughs> this 80s, 90s theme bag is just so cute. And this is my Barbie socks. So I'm using the Malibu Dreams Barbie uh, mystery sock set that we had in the shop for our last mystery set. It was Malibu Dreams is what we called it. That's our logo. And I have made quite a bit of progress on this. I'm still on the first sock though. <laughs> this is what the yarn looks like, it's so pretty pink with all the neons. So I'm through the heel and I am working on the foot. I'm just doing a plain vanilla sock except for um, the heel, which I'll talk about in a second. This was the little progress keeper that came with the mystery set. I did the heel from the Wrap em All Vanilla Socks. It's a garter short row heel and I love it. It's really squishy and lots of room, like much more so than a normal short row heel. <laughs> I don't know if, I think it's because of the garter maybe or also because there is a extra little gusset area. So it gives you a little bit of extra room, which I actually really love. So I did 25 rounds for the cuff, and then I did some striping here with the contrast color mini that came with it. And I'm thinking I might repeat these stripes at the bottom right before I get to the toe. Either that or I'll make the toe pink, this pink color. I haven't decided yet. That might actually be cute to have the toe this color. So that's where I'm at with those. Love it. The last pair of socks that I have to show you is a new cast on. It is the uh, Olympics socks that I was telling you about on the last episode. It's in our Olympics bag that we had from our summer collection. And I used our Go For The Gold minis set, which was 
a um, five piece mini set that um, represented the rings of the Olympics logo. So that was all of the colors. Plus this is a 50 gram skein of white sands for the contrast. And I'm following a pattern sort of. So uh, there's a pattern called the Floofy House Socks from Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And it's a DK weight pattern. She actually uses DK weight, she uses regular yarn plus she, I think she holds a surrey or mohair with it. And I've been wanting to make these socks for a while. I have, I've, so I bought the pattern, but I, so I used all of the numbers and the techniques from that sock pattern. Sorry, I just looked over at my cat. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's looking out the window. Anyway, sorry for that distraction. Um, so I wanted to, I used all of the numbers from this pattern as far as cast on numbers and I used the heel and the toe from this pattern as well because it's her butterfly heel and her umbrella toe, which if you guys know, if you've seen my past projects, you know I use those t those two techniques a lot. And this one was a DK weight version of those. So I definitely wanna make these socks, but I haven't yet. I just used this pattern to, I modified it basically. So here is the first finished sock. As you can see, that is her umbrella toe and the butterfly heel. So I cast on with white sands and did five rounds of two by two ribbing. And then I started the, uh, the fade. So I started with blue, like I went in order of the rings, the colors and, um, how did I, I don't remember how I worked out the numbers, but basically I, I used a modified version of the fade formula that I've sh talked about here before. I'll link that below. But for DK weight, I knew I wouldn't be able to use that formula. So I just modified it basically like to what I thought looked like a cute little fade. So that is the first one. And I have actually started the second one, but I'm not very far. Let's see. The, uh, you do have to have, you do have to weave in a lot of ends <laughs> with doing the, this fade. So here's where I'm at, my cute little torch progress keeper. And as you can see, I've done the heel. Uh, one thing I did wanna talk about is that on this sock, I wasn't thinking when I started this sock because normally I switch colors on the bottom. Like I will, I'll, I'll switch the colors on the bottom of the foot. So you can't see the col the change, the jog. But I forgot to do that on this one. So you can see on that side where I switched the colors, the little bit of the jog, which that doesn't bother me. It's on your feet, who cares? But I did switch it on this one to the bottom. I'm gonna switch the colors on this one to the bottom. So maybe it does really bother me and I just, I don't know. <laughs> Personally, I like to switch the colors on the bottom if I can, so you don't see them on the left or the right side of your foot. But you really won't be able to see it that, that much once it's on. So, it's a fun project. I've really enjoyed working on them, and um, like I watched the girls' gymnastics uh, event, and because that's my favorite thing to watch, and some of the diving and the swimming I have watched as well. So I've enjoyed working on these while I've been watching those events. So I love them. So cute.
Oh, and I have these really cute um, American flag. I guess it would be that way. <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell on camera which way's the right way. Um, I have these really cute American flag needle stoppers, and we actually have these in the shop. We have a bunch of different countries. I can't remember all of them. Germany, France, uh, the UK, Australia, Canada. Um, so if you like these needle stoppers, go check out the shop. I'm using a US 3, I think. Three, US 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter needle. And I'm making them magic loop. I'm, I'm using magic loop. It looks like a big old mess, but it's really not. <laughs> um, I will say weaving in the ends um, doesn't really bother me too much. Sometimes I weave in the ends as I'm going, um, but sometimes I don't. I just leave them for the end. It just depends on what's going on. That's all my whips. It's six of them, I think. Yes, six whips. That stresses me out. I know sometimes people have so many more than that. <laughs> um, but I don't like having a lot of whips at once. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a million different things you're working on. Um, but it stresses me out. And I don't know why. I, I don't know. So, having six whips right now kind of feels stressful. It shouldn't. They're just projects. <laughs> like, it doesn't really matter. But I don't know why it does. So, anyway, what else do I want to talk about? I have some happy mail. And I actually have some future plans when I get rid of all these whips. I want to talk to you about that. A little bit of dream knitting. And I think that's it. There are a couple of patterns that I want to make. The first one is called the Bryony Headband. It's a knitting pattern by Brianna Kovalik. I'm going to probably butcher that. Isn't that cute? The Bryony Headband. On Instagram, she is Fiber and Fern. Uh... I believe so, fiber and fern. And I've been wanting to make a headband for a long time and I really like this the design of this one. So it's a and it's a DK weight, I believe. Let me just double check. Yes, DK weight. And it uses a uh, hundred and ninety yards. So you only need one skein of DK weight yarn to make this headband which I thought was really cool because I have so many DK weight yarns that are um, from my Avery Lane Creation subscription and I was like, this is a perfect way to use up some of these one skein DK weight yarns that I have. So I have this one that I want to use for that project. This is called uh, Memory Lane. And her base is so soft. It's the 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon. And this is 100 grams, 246 yards. So it's perfect for this project. I'll have a little bit left over that I can use for a DK scrappy something blanket probably. So I want to use this one. And then I want to make this, use this one for Christmas. I have like a... Christmassy colored one. This is called Leaf and Impression. Whoops. Sorry, I hit the microphone. <laughs> I thought that would be pretty. And then I thought this one would also be pretty. It's for more of a neutral. It's called Nude, Where's My Color? move my microphone back there so if I like the pattern I'm gonna start with I think this one 
If I like the pattern and I want to make more of them, I'm going to use these colors to make a couple more of them. These would be a great gift too. I should think about that for Christmas. I don't know. I'm going to cast this on and see how I like the pattern. I think I'll like it. Uh, what else? There's another pattern that I just saw last night, actually. It's called Herds the Word by Laura DeBratz. It's a cowl. I've made a couple of Laura's patterns in the past. She is the owner of one of our local yarn shops here called Four Pearls. And I love that yarn shop. It's in, um, it's about an hour away from here, 45 minutes from where I live. Uh, but so she, and she's also a pattern designer and I've made a shawl of hers and no two shawls I think I've made two of her shawls in the past um, but this is a cowl it's really really pretty this is just a solid color but she also tells you uh, there's a sample in the pattern um, if you wanted to use minis there's like a multicolor version um, and I believe you need 550 yards of fingering weight yarn. So you could use two skeins of the same color or you could use minis um, and stripe them. Uh, there's a couple of different things you could do. My thought <laughs> was um, I wanted to see what it would look like you because I really liked the multicolor version of it. I don't I can't show the picture in here because this is a paid for pattern and I um, don't want to show the pattern itself but uh, maybe I can pop up a picture up of it here of what the multicolor version looks like where she used the minis and striped them and I thought how cute would that be to use a self-striping yarn I think I don't know I have to think about where it starts and the increases because that's going to make your stripes smaller. I have to look at the construction of it because if I can use a self-striping yarn, I want to use this one. Purple's my favorite color and I thought this would be cute to use around Halloween time since this is a Halloween colorway. This is the Freckled Whimsy self-striping yarn and it's called Goblin Party. This is from her Halloween club. And this one's from July and I thought because the mini is 25 grams so this is hundred and twenty five grams I believe there's enough yardage here to make that cowl so I'm curious to try this with it um, I feel like that cowl is something that I would want to make um, in a more neutral color so I could wear it anytime in the in the fall and winter but I think it would be fun to try the self striping with it first and see how that turns out and then have something um, I mean this isn't just Halloween you know so I could use this anytime but it's really cute and I thought it would be cute um, for going into fall to use this so those are two of my future plans. The other thing that I have been thinking about making is the wallop cowl. That, um, the Crazy Sock Lady has made a couple of those. She just finished one recently with like some scrappy yarns. And I just, I've always loved that pattern. Every time she makes it, I'm like, oh, I wanna make one of those. And I've been trying to find something to do with this yarn and I don't I just don't know if I have enough I need to buy the pattern and check out the yardage and how much I'll actually need to complete that pattern because I don't know I don't think this is enough but maybe I could modify it somehow I don't know but this yarn is I've had it for several years this is what they look like Woo! This is alpaca yarn. My friend Kelly gave this to me, gosh, probably three, two or three years ago when she was here. Um, she came to Florida. And it's from whirlwindranch.com. 
and it's an alpaca yarn. I'm assuming it's 100% alpaca. It's fingering weight. I'm not sure what these numbers mean. It says approximately 100 yards. And they're just so pretty. I'm pretty sure these are like natural colors of the alpaca. I don't think these are dyed. I don't know, I need to go on their website and see, take a look. What is it called? Whirlwindranch.com. I'll link them below. But anyway, I thought it would be so fun to stripe these. And normally I'm not like a brown, tan, neutral color, but I just thought for fall, these would be very pretty to stripe through. I just don't know if I have enough. I have, I'd have to look at the pattern and see. I just thought those would be really pretty in the wallop cowl, a nice neutral color that I could use, but also not boring because of the striping of them. So if I don't use them for that cowl, I might use them for something else. I don't know. I have to weigh these and see how much one of these is. Let me go do that. Let me go weigh with these and see how much this is. So each of these is 25 grams. So I have 100 grams here. I don't think that's enough to do a wallop cowl. So I don't know, I'll have to look. I'm gonna buy the pattern anyway because I wanna make it whether I use this or something else. Um, but I don't know, do you have any recommendations for a pretty cowl? or even a scarf, I guess, um, that I could use with these and sort of stripe them somehow. I don't know, maybe I'll just make up my own. <laughs> um, I could, no, I don't wanna do the Memories of Paris cowl because that, I don't wanna have to use mohair with this. Um, not that you would have to, but I don't know if you have any ideas for these, because now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if that wallop cowl will work for this, but this is 100 grams, basically, of alpaca yarn. So, so pretty. I love it. And I've had it, I've been hanging on to it forever because I just have not figured out what I want to make with it yet. So, and apparently I'm still on the fence about it. I did get some happy mail. Let me show you. So I told you guys earlier that I ordered from Knit Picks. I have never ordered from Knit Picks before, uh, which is kind of crazy, but I didn't want to just order one thing, of course. <laughs> so I had a peek around and they were having a sale on some of their dishy um, cotton, yarn for like to make dishcloths with so well first of all let me show you i also got this gold uh it's called treasure the colorway because i was like i wasn't sure if um the black if i wanted to do black for that muscle burrow hat but um so i got two of the black because I figured I can use these with whatever. And then I got this too, just to see how it matched with the hat, but I didn't end up liking it. Um, it looks a little bit orange on my screen, but it's actually a little bit more goldy, golden color, um, which probably could have matched, but I didn't, I, I'll just save it for something else because it didn't work out for me to use it with the hat. Um, but then I did get some, Dishy twist, it's called. Oh no, it's not. I did get some other Knit Picks yarn, their Dishy base. It is 100% cotton, worsted weight. It's really good for um, washcloths or tea towels, something like that. This is 100 grams, I think. 100 grams, yep, 190 yards, worsted weight. So this one's called Silver Twist. And then I got this one 
called Pebble. I think this one might stripe. I'm not sure. And then I got Blue Twist. And I got Blue. Oh, this one's called Cup and Saucer. So I got these to make some washcloths or maybe even some dishcloths. Probably washcloths. I have not made washcloths in so long. So, so long. I, I, so I got those. There is a knit along starting on September 1st and I think it's called Knit People Knit. It's a Gilmore Girls inspired knit along hosted by Leah from Leah Loves to Knit. She's on Instagram. She, uh, I, and it's a Gilmore Girls themed knit along. I think I said that already. Anyway, she had some, um, she collaborated with some people, some project bag makers and yarn dyers. And I have realized that I don't have any Gilmore Girls bags. I don't even have any Gilmore Girls yarn but I can dye that if I wanted something inspired by Gilmore Girls. Um, and I can't remember who the yarn dyer was that she used like for the collaboration. I'll link her below her Instagram so you can go check out the knit along, but it's a fall knit along. I think if you follow, if you like Gilmore Girls, you'll know that um, knitting is sort of a big part of that show. <laughs> so I had to get some project bags for the knit along and just because I didn't have any Gilmore Girls. So this is a project bag from Cozy Corner CK. Her name is Nicole. That is her um, logo. And look how cute. I'm trying to figure out which way is the front and the back. Look how cute. This is like a flannel. This is flannel. I just absolutely love it. And it's a drawstring. So it's perfect for making some socks. And then I got another project bag. Well, it's more like a tote bag, but you can totally use it as a project bag. And this one is from Katie's Randomness. Let me see if I can. Katie's Randomness. She's on Instagram and Etsy. I'll link her down below. Hope that's showing up. And look at this cute sticker she sent with it. Oh my gosh, I love it. And this one too. Both references to the show. And this is the tote. Oh, this is what their knit -a -thon is called. The, let's see if I can read this backwards. The Old Muddy River Bridge knit -a -thon. Knit people, knit. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So if you're a Gilmore Girls fan, I feel like you would totally love this. So I am all set and ready to go for that knit-a-thon. Um, Leah is coming out. I just saw, like, she teased in her stories a new pattern that she's making because she's a sock designer. I don't know if she designs other things, but I know she's designed socks. And the new one that she's coming out with is really cute. I definitely want to make them. The other two things I got in the mail were my subscriptions that I have. The Freckled Whimsy Halloween Club was so beautiful this month. It's the August Halloween Club. So if you haven't opened yours yet and you don't want to be spoiled, then look away. It's called Home Sweet Haunted Home. Look at these colors. They're gorgeous. 
<laughs> I cannot wait to make these. These might have to be like a September 1st cast on or something. How adorable is that? It's so beautiful. Home sweet haunted home. I've absolutely enjoyed every single month so far of this Halloween club. Do not regret it one bit. <laughs> the only regret I have is not getting her Christmas club as well. And then my other subscription is Avery Lane Creations. And this month it was called Oh So Sweet, July 2024. This is the yarn. So beautiful. I love it. It's called Candied Mermaid Lemonade. Isn't that pretty? And the extras were, so she sent some eucalyn wool wash in the grapefruit pomegranate, no, grapefruit, is that the French word for grapefruit, pomplemousse? That's very interesting. I almost said grapefruit pomplemousse, but I think that's the French word for grapefruit. I don't know. Does anybody know? Pomp pample moose. <laughs> Sorry, just totally went off on a tangent there. And then this super cute pin. It says it's not hoarding if it's yarn. Isn't that cute? That'll go cute on one of my project bags. And then I think this, the treat was, oh, a cookie dough bar. It was this little sugar cookie that was like cookie dough, but it was an edible cookie dough. I guess it didn't have anything raw in it. <laughs> it was really good. So that is it for Happy Meal. I think that is all I have to share with you guys today. Thank you for sitting down with me for a little while and catching up on the things that I'm working on. Just a reminder, the mystery set will go up for sale for pre-order on Saturday, the Hocus Pocus mystery set. So uh, thank you guys in advance for purchasing that. I have a feeling you will all love it. <laughs> I hope you are all doing well. It was so nice to catch up with you all in la the last episode's comments. And thank you guys for um, saying hello and for just catching up with me. I really enjoyed talking to you all and uh, commenting back to you. So I hope you all continue to enjoy your summer and I will see you again in two weeks. I believe the next episode will be the preview video but I have to look at my calendar it might not be it might be a regular episode either way you'll see me again in two weeks so take care guys thanks